remedies against judgment of conviction. If you are the defense counsel of the accused and the accused and your client was convicted, then it is not yet the end of the world because there are remedies that can be used that is available as provided by the rules. These are modification of judgment under section 7 of rule 120. Next is reopening of proceedings, section 24 of rule 119. Then motion for new trial and motion for reconsideration under section 1 of rule 121 and appeal under rule 122 so the first is modification of judgment under section 7 of rule 122 a judgment of conviction may upon motion of the accused be modified or set aside before it becomes final or before appeal is perfected so file a motion for modification of judgment it should be filed after the date of promulgation of judgment after the date of convicting the accused but before the judgment becomes final before the expiration of period to make an appeal so within the period um file already motion for modification of judgment the limitation only is that where the death penalty is imposed a judgment becomes final after the lapse of the period for perfecting an appeal or when the sentence has been partially or totally satisfied or served or when the accused has waived in writing his right to appeal or has applied for probation so it is important to take note of the date from the judgment of promulgation to the date of judgment becomes final do not um, apply yet for probation or do not allow the accused waive his right to appeal because that will be a bar it will prevent the accused to avail this remedy the second is um, the reopening of proceedings under section 24 of rule 119 at any time before the finality of judgment of conviction the judge on its own initiative motu proprio or upon motion by the accused with hearing in either case reopen the proceedings to avoid a miscarriage of justice the proceedings shall be terminated within 30 days from the order of granting it so after the date of promulgation promulgating conviction file already a motion to reopen the proceedings filing a motion or courts on its own but Practically, as a party um, convicted, file a motion to reopen the proceedings. When the motion for reopening is granted, there will be a 30-day hearing, 30 days of hearing from the date of granting the motion for reopening. Take note, the purpose of reopening the proceedings is for further reception of evidence. The next remedy is the filing of motion for new trial or reconsideration that is under section 1 of rule 121. At any time before a judgment of conviction becomes final, the court on motion of the accused or at its own instance but with the consent of the accused grant a new trial or reconsideration so file this motion for new trial or reconsideration within the period of perfecting an appeal or before the judgment of conviction becomes final 
This motion for new trial or reconsideration shall be in writing and shall state the grounds on which it is based. If based on a newly discovered evidence, the motion must be supported by affidavits of witnesses by whom such evidence is expected to be given or by duly authenticated copies of documents which are proposed to be introduced in evidence. Notice of the motion for new trial or reconsideration shall be given to the prosecutor. This should be taken no, taken into consideration by the counsel who is filing for this motion for new trial or reconsideration. It shall notify the prosecutor. Take note that the movement, the one who filed this motion, has a fresh period of 15 days from receipt of the notice of order denying or dismissing the motion for reconsideration or new trial within which to file a notice of appeal. So this is the NAPES rule. Take note, in filing for motion for reconsideration or new trial, it should be filed within the date from the date of um, promulgating the conviction of the accused to the date um, before expiring the perfecting of an appeal or before the judgment becomes final. Normally, it is 15 days only. Um, upon filing of motion for reconsideration and new trial, there will be a resolution, either granting the motion or denying the motion. When it comes with denying the motion, from the date of notice denying the motion, the court will grant another 15 days. This is the fresh period, fresh period of 15 days to file a notice of appeal to the court which renders the judgment of conviction. Question. When to file motion for reconsideration and when to file motion for new trial? If you will file... Uh, motion for reconsideration, it should be on the ground of errors of law or fact in the judgment, and it requires no further proceedings. Uh, take note, in filing for motion for reconsideration, assert on the ground of errors of law or fact in the judgment. If that motion for reconsideration is granted, then the original judgment of that court shall be set aside or vacated and be replaced by a new judgment rendered accordingly. How about grounds to assert motion for new trial? The first is the errors of law or irregularities prejudicial to the substantial rights of the accused have been committed during the trial. And next is that the new and material evidence has been discovered which the accused could not, with reasonable diligence, have discovered and produced at the trial, and which, if introduced and admitted, would probably change the judgment. Take note that the trial means from arraignment to rendition of judgment. These are the requisites of newly discovered evidence. The evidence must be discovered after trial. It could not have been previously discovered or produced at the trial even with exercise of reasonable diligence. And it is new and material evidence. If introduced and admitted, it would probably change the judgment. Again, if you are the counsel of the accused who is aggrieved of the judgment of conviction, file this motion for new trial on the ground of errors of law or irregularities prejudicial to the substantial rights of the accused committed during the trial. It should be here, um, here the rights of the accused are prejudiced or deprived. It should be substantial rights of the accused deprived and prejudiced due to the errors of law and irregularities while the second ground is the new and material evidence these the evidence must be discovered after trial then 
um, it means to say after trial, after the rendition of judgment. And it could not be discovered, the evidence, the, new, the newly discovered evidence um, could not been, could not have been previously discovered and produced at the trial even with um, exercise of reasonable diligence. So it means to say even there is um, diligence of searching um, another evidence but it could not be um, discovered. It was. It has been discovered already after the trial or after the rendition of judgment. And if such newly discovered evidence is admitted, it could substantially change the judgment. If the motion for new trial is granted on the ground of errors of law or irregularities committed during the trial, the effect would be the the. All proceedings and evidence affected thereby shall be set aside and taken anew. So it means to say, if there is errors of law or irregularities committed during the trial and prejudicial to the substantial rights of the accused, all proceedings and evidence taken or evidence shall be affected thereby and shall be set aside. The court may in the interest of justice allow the introduction of additional evidence so again if the motion for new trial is granted on the ground of errors of law um, all proceedings and even evidence taken shall be set aside and the court in the interest of justice may allow the introduction of additional evidence if the motion for new trial is granted on the ground of newly discovered evidence the evidence already adduced or collected shall stand and the newly discovered and such other evidence as the court may in the interest of justice allow to be introduced shall be taken and considered together with the evidence already in the record so the these two grounds are opposite in terms of their effects in errors of law if the motion is granted on the ground of errors of law or irregularities the evidence taken shall be set aside while in the grounds for of new on the ground of new and material evidence or newly discovered evidence those evidence taken already by the court um, shall stand shall remain but the newly discovered shall be allowed to be introduced and taken together with those evidence already in the record in the interest of justice take note if any of the grounds asserted in the motion for new trial granted by the court the original judgment shall be set aside or vacated and a new judgment rendered accordingly. Appeal under rules 122 to 125. Any party as a general rule may appeal from a judgment or final order unless the accused will be placed in double jeopardy. Again, as a general rule, any party may Go for appeal from a judgment or final order of the court unless the accused will be placed or will be covered or subject to double jeopardy that is under section 1 of rule 122. If the judgment of the court is acquitted, if the court acquits the accused, the double jeopardy can now be invoked. The accused can invoke double jeopardy. So therefore, the prosecution cannot appeal the case because the right of the accused against double jeopardy shall bar them, shall prevent them to make an appeal. So what is the remedy of the prosecution? It is the Rule 65. File for certiorari. File a petition for certiorari under Rule 65 in the higher court questioning if there is grave of abuse of discretion on the judge amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction. If the court renders a judgment of conviction, the remedy of the defense counsel on the conviction of his client is to file a motion for modification, 
motion for reopening of the proceedings, motion for reconsideration, motion for new trial, and file a notice of appeal within the period from the date of judgment of promulgation or from, from the date of promulgation of judgment to the date before the judgment becomes final or before the lapse of the um, period to perfect an appeal. Take note, appeal must be taken within 15 days from the date of promulgation of judgment or from the date of new notice of final order. So again, as the counsel of the convicted accused, within 15 days, file already the um, motions or remedies available under these rules. This time, let us go to the courts where you will be making appeals or filing for appeal. First, if the case is decided by the Municipal Trial Court or MTC, then appeal the case to the Regional Trial Court. This is being made by filing a notice of appeal with MTC and by serving a copy thereof upon the adverse party. So under rule number 40, notice of appeal, file this notice of appeal with Municipal Trial Court. Next, petition for review under rule 42. If the MTC has the original jurisdiction over the case and RTC is the appellate jurisdiction, then file petition for review with Court of Appeals within 15 days from the receipt of notice. So, for short, if the case is decided by MTC, then make an appeal under Rule 40, Notice of Appeal, to the Regional Trial Court. Then, the decision of the Regional Trial Court can be reviewed by the Court of Appeals by filing a petition for review under Rule 42 within 15 days only from the date of receipt of notice. What if the Regional Trial Court has the ju original jurisdiction over the case? If the Regional Trial Court decides the case, then make an appeal to the Court of Appeals under Rule 41. File a notice of appeal with the Regional Trial Court or final order appealed from and by serving a copy thereof upon the adverse party. What if the Regional Trial Court imposed the penalty of um, reclusion perpetua, life imprisonment, or with offenses with lesser appeal? So therefore, um, appeal the decided case uh, appeal the decision of the Regional Trial Court to the Supreme Court by filing a Notice of Appeal with Regional Trial Court. Again, if the Regional Trial Court impose a penalty of reclusion perpetua, life imprisonment, or penalty with um, lesser appeal, then therefore, make an appeal to the Supreme Court by filing a Notice of Appeal with RTC.